Hello, I'm Intralithium, and welcome to my first impressions for Falling Skies, the game. Now, Falling Skies, the game is, of course, a game based off of the TV show Falling Skies, where aliens come to Earth, they kind of try and wipe out the human race, and then a band of humans ends up being like a resistance organization. I've watched the first season, I thought it was pretty generic, um, wasn't terribly bad, but wasn't good in particularly anyway. Um, it was okay. So, this is a game based upon it. Uh, it's by Taurus Games, who have done a lot of Nintendo games, so going all the way back to the original Game Boy, I think. I think the last game on their website that actually got a picture is Barbie Dream House Party. It's also published by Little Orbit, who also published Barbie Dream House Party. So that's going to be interesting. Now, as you can see here, we've got some, um... You are the slightly low quality stuff, and we get to the menu, and uh, well, for a start, there's no options menu on here. Uh, a lot of the options actually have to be done before we get into the game. You get this little loader, and it goes, Do you want to go to the configuration or do you want to play the game? Um, some options are on there. They have anti analyzing on and off, and they have a choice of high or low, I think maybe med medium quality shadows. Yeah, so there's there's not that much in the way of options. There is actually another options menu, but you have to get into the game to actually get to it. For instance, I really want to turn the music off because I think that I'm going to probably get copyright ID'd for whatever this kind of very similar loopy music is, uh, just in case. But I can't get to the options menu from here, so I actually have to go into a game rather than just into the game, uh, which is kind of annoying. But basically, this game is a... <sighs> I really don't want to say what it's like, because you should easily be able to guess, but it's kind of like a tactical, squad-based game with strategy elements. Yeah, so let's continue. I should dive straight into this game that I've already started. Um, just a word of clarification, I have played about two hours of this game. Um, my Steam only tells me I've played about an hour and a bit. Uh, Steam's lying, I've definitely played more than that, I think it's about two hours. Um, however... I do agree that those of you who like two hours isn't very much to get first impressions. I would agree. I just I I can't go on. I I have to do my impressions now, or I'm not going to be I'm not going to be covering this game. <laughs> so you can see here we've got our squad. Um, four guys. You know, there's one person who's got a, a machine gun and a rocket launcher. And there's uh, a guy who's got you know a shotgun. And there's a sniper. And there's someone here who's a, a machine gun type thing. I think this is an AK. And they've got the backup weapons a shotgun. Now the backup uh, weapon would normally be a pistol, but I changed it for the shotgun because there doesn't seem to be a downside. Um, yeah, there really doesn't seem to be a downside, which seems weirdly balanced, but I just was like, yep, then you'll have a shotgun. Uh, the sniper can't have a shotgun as a backup weapon, which is a shame, but oh well. Now, as you can see, you've got this sort of move tiles, and if you see when I move up to this, it's got a half cover, full cover target, uh, type of thing, being like, you know, that's really good to hide behind, and that's only slightly good to hide behind. And this seems somewhat familiar from a game that we all know and love, or probably most of us know and love. Feels like XCOM, doesn't it? You've got a squad of four people, you've got high and low cover, you've got a blue move, and you've got a yellow move. You've got the ability to attack, and you've got the ability to defend, which is hunker. You've got, you know, some people have got grenades, if you outfit them with grenades, you can swap weapons, you can load weapons. And uh, the class, yeah, well, the machine gun with a rocket launcher, that's a heavy, that's an assault, that's a scout sniper type person, and that's a generic -y infantry assaulty person. This seems very familiar, doesn't it? It does seem awfully reminiscent. So, we're going to move our okay. scout sniper up to here. And there we go, we have seen an enemy. Um, he's behind full cover now. Now those are the guys from the TV show that have like the little harnessy things on the back. They basically get children, they put these harnessy things on the back of the children with some sort of parasite type thing and suddenly the children become subservient. Like I said, I only watched season one. Uh, it was fairly generic. Uh, we'll move Over up there? behind all the half cover and I don't know, I don't know what do the heavy. We just move the heavy to... Here? Got it. Now, I don't think we can get a shot with anyone. No. Now, what you would normally do in XCOM at this stage is be like, right, I can't get a shot. I'll overwatch everyone. However, this game seems to be missing the ability to overwatch. I believe I have had it in one of the previous 
uh, missions I did with one person. I think Overwatch is a class ability belonging to one particular class. And that is very, very weird. Because Overwatch is kind of important. It's very important for these situations where you're like, okay, I can't move up, so I will Overwatch. And yes, you could say, oh, you'll get stuck in a stalemate where both of you will be Overwatching. But it doesn't tend to actually end up like that, especially in XCOM. Um, so I'm kind of thinking the lack of an Overwatch is a massive oversight, particularly if you get enemies that want to run at you. Like, you, you can Overwatch because they're around a corner, but nope. Uh, in this game, you will just have to get attacked. One thing I do like is it says, mouse of a grenade, and it says, oh, you can hit one person. That means, uh... They are in range of our grenade. That is a nice addition, okay? That's about the only thing in this game which is a nice addition. However, I can't put it, press escape to actually get rid of the uh, the highlight on the grenade. I have to highlight something else, and as you can see, that's not working. So, I can select move to stop that. Hmm. It's a very odd UI. Now, this is something I'm going to bang out about. There we go, just defend everyone. I'm going to bang out about on this, uh, this little first impressions kind of a lot. Is that the UI is balls? Um, yeah. Bro, oh, here we go. Here, here, here we go. For a start, right? UI, UX, user interface, user ex uh, experience. This is Q and E for, to ro rotate, right? Q and E are often rotate in this kind of game. This is me pressing Q. This is me pressing E. They're on the wrong side. E says you rotate to the right. It rotates you to the left. Q says it will rotate you to the left. It rotates you to the right. Now, actually, let's go to the options menu, and I'm going to quickly turn off the music before I get content ID'd. Because, you know, I just really want to be content ID'd on this game. If you look at the controls, right, controls under options. They are not rebindable. They are not rebindable in any way. <sighs> and it says Q, rotate left. Nope, it rotates you to the right. No, no, that's wrong, and no one noticed this. Uh, also, another fact, you can see that a lot of the controls um, navigate... Oh, that navigates your menus, where you've got a mouse and that. You can see a lot of the controls are done by, you know, Wazda. That's fine, move move camera on Wazda. I actually really like that. I prefer it to having the arrow keys. In fact, I would decry any strategy game that doesn't use Wazda. But the issue you find here is you've got, you know, Wazda for move, you've got Z and X for, you know, previous unit, next, and C for next unit, blah, blah, blah. And then to accept an action, you have to press Enter. On the other side of the keyboard. This is just a stupid control design. Audio options. At least you've got three separate sizes for that. Game settings. Easy, normal, and hard. Yeah. Oh, God damn it! Every time I rotate in this game. Every time. Uh, we'll just move up. And... Shoot. And yeah, I really want to press space to accept this, but I have to... We're making it happen. Now you can see that that was a, a very nice animation there, very fluid, how he fired that shotgun from the hip without really pivoting very much. There was a sort of pivot going on in the hips, but there was nothing in the legs or arms. Uh, that's probably the worst of the animations for shooting. The others do have slightly better animations, for instance, if I use uh, this. Right. Yeah, no, no, okay, that's, that's pretty bad as well. The rifles, in the defense of the rifles, the rifles are actually brought up to shoulder when they're fired. No problem. But... Look alive. We've got company. Okay, we've triggered that guy. But uh, the, the LMGs and the shotguns are fired very much from the hip, and they're not even... It looks like a very lazy animation where the guy just literally pivots at the hip and then fires from where he was holding. Uh, right, so he's going to come up here. And he's going to stand in the open. Yep. Now this is this is actually fairly typical from the AI in this game. The AI in this game can be... I wouldn't just say derpy. Derpy explains the AI in XCOM sometimes. The AI in XCOM is generally, you know, it does its job, but sometimes it makes cock-ups. In this game, it's fairly typical for people to do very suicidal moves like this. I, I guess it's because, partly because they don't have an Overwatch. They won't, you know, sit at the top of there knowing they have a better position and Overwatch me. Um... Oh, there we go, I got the rotation right that time. Now, you can actually attack twice in this game, instead of having have one move and one attack, or two moves. Uh, you can actually just attack twice. As you can see here, we've attacked, but we've still got the ability to use our sniper. Problem is, now I've attacked, I can't actually click anyone else to select them. Yeah. 
Uh, attacking once and then trying to do your second option breaks the ability to click on anyone. You can still select next unit, but you have to do it via these. You cannot use the clicky function. So, yeah. To be fair, there aren't that many bugs in this game. I was expecting a lot more bugs. As you can see, you can actually still click on people uh, once you've actually you know, got out of it. I was expecting a lot more bugs in this. There aren't that many bugs. I'd probably say that f when XCOM came out, it probably had more bugs. That said, XCOM was a decent game. Um, right, so we'll move everyone up. On my way. And then, you know, because we can't overwatch, I guess we defend. Now, as you can see there, it says Epiphany Phase, or Esfinani Phase, or whatever the aliens are called. I can't remember. It's okay. a while since I watched the TV show. No aliens triggered? Okay, I guess we'll move everyone up to there. I was expecting aliens at the top. Let's do this. Um, yeah, have a look at that text when it pops up on screen. You can see it looks kind of low res. Now, this video oh, yeah. is a 1080p video. I am playing it in 1080p. Unless something goes drastically wrong, it should be 1080p when it gets to YouTube. Uh, which you know, wouldn't be not unusual for YouTube. But... Why? It's... It looks so jaggy. Uh, we need to be smart about this. Look out! Really? Esthenny phase. There we go. That's what they're called, the Esthenny. Now let's move up. Let go to the corner go. here. Probably going to find some around there. Yeah, there we go. Now we can shoot them. Can we suppress? No. Now the uh, the normal dude with the uh, the assault rifle actually has this combat knife melee attack. Which, to me, seems completely pointless. I've played a several missions now, and I still haven't actually had to use it particularly. Because, um, it's a game about guns. Now, I would Overwatch here, because this is 45% chance, but again, no Overwatch. So, we're going to go to the shoot. And we managed to get the kill there. Now, in this mission, our objective is to get to these crates and actually uh, grab whatever they've got. These crates basically uh, have, like, supplies in, and we're basically trying to keep our, uh, our operation afloat via supplies. Now, they had... This has a good potential in its theory, in that you're like your resistance organization. No it's kind of XCOM, but supplies are more important. Okay, you've got this uh, whole, you know, having to survive, having to scrabble. Instead of being the high-tech XCOM organization type thing, you have, you know, Whenever the skin you of your teeth, you're uh, like, sabotaging uh, aliens, you're having to, you know, scavenge as much as you can. There's maybe, like, a good theory, possibly, there. But, uh, as you can see already, the, the graphics are... Very lackluster. Got it. And you haven't even had a chance to see what the cutscenes look like. Now there's space, press space, well, and right. we get that supply. Now we need to get six of those. Um, I guess we move up slightly. On my way. Now these guys are basically like chrysalids, except they've got a ridiculous move distance more so than chrysalids from XCOM. Uh, but they turn up early in the game as well. Now we actually get a shot here at that guy up there. I wasn't expecting that. We'll go with our aim. Surprisingly enough, this aim perk is one of the first perks for a sniper. That seems very similar to a certain game called XCOM, where the sniper's first perk can be... Uh, well, I think second perk? I haven't played vanilla in ages. Can be precision shot, but we'll take it nonetheless. Managed to do a decent amount of damage there. I guess we'll move up to Let's here. Go. Can we get suppression? Who is suppression? No, it's you who's got suppression. Um, we'll stand in the opening, just give suppression. Oh no, you're not. You, you're not. It's, you've got the suppression. God damn it. Uh, we'll move you back. You've got the shotgun. Roger You'll that. be useful against the critter type person running around. Um, we'll take a shot. 21, but it'll be a kill if we get it. Nobody saw that. No. All right. Roger that. Right, and he's just moved to there without actually taking a shot of doing anything defensive. Yeah. Yeah. 13% chance we're not going to be taking that. Oh, bollocks. I want to hit escape to get back out of that. Um, no, I just go next unit, I guess. Uh, you have... Assault Let's rifle go. and shotgun, so you can be useful for both. 
Let's see, who can our sniper get? Can you actually get that? 61% chance. I hope you choke on it. Okay, one hit. And we'll go attack again. That's it. Alright, now. Move you up to here. You're not going to get very close, and you've got to get that shotgun in, really. So I don't know if this is really going to be particularly useful. Uh, let's switch between... There we go. And I think we'll just take the shot here. Yeah, 85. So there we go. He doesn't actually shoulder that weapon. Um, but again, the sound effects are incredibly lackluster for them. You heard that firing. It it didn't sound like any sort of gun. Very high-pitched and not... Just poor. Really, really poor. Let's move you up. Yes, sunny phase, and now as you can see, uh, basically, there's this fog of war that sits around, and it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't look like a particularly nice fog of war, it looks very grey, and, <sighs> I mean, I don't want to rip on something like as completely pointless as the fog of war right. looking a bit, ugh, but the way it just now one of my favorite things is <laughs> uh the the rocket launches in this game they are absolutely brilliant oh uh, i'll have to show you them take the shot might as well i guess i didn't practice enough will do and sniper now, the one thing that's annoying is you can't see who's actually had their turn at first glance from these portraits either. Whereas you can from, like, you know, if you've got the person selected, you can see their things highlighted, but these people are all greyed out. Now, they look the same greyed out as if you selected someone else. Now, I can't do it now to show you, unfortunately, but you should have seen it as we changed to her. She had the same portrait as he now has, which kind of seems pointless. Uh, move. We're going to move to no here. Problem. Look alive. We get a shot on this guy down here. No targets in range. Huh. Well, that's good to know. If he shoots me, I'll be very displeased. Or he could move twice to get to the same place he could have moved in one go. Again, like I said, the AI in this game... Uh, yeah. Well, let's make that a uh, an 84. Still sucker. Oh! Yeah. The gunshots are quieter than the sounds of people dying. And I can't click because we've already... Yep. Yeah. Okay. Lovely bug there. Let's grab that. I could do this all day. And let's switch weapon because the rocket launcher is hilarious. Oh, wrong way around. Attack. You're looking for the best ever rocket effect. Here it comes. Yep. That's yeah. Yep, that's 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 part of the course. Guess we'll go to here. <sighs> okay. You got it. Move further up. And I guess we'll reload. Oh no, not swap weapon. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to do reload. There we go. Back to the grind. That definitely is a close up animation, that, that reload there. Whoa. Over there. Who knows what could have happened? Reload. I don't think it'll hold anymore. And we've got to get another Four containers, is it? Now, we don't actually know because the uh, objectives aren't on the screen. Can we get the objectives up? There we go. Two out of six. Alright, so we've got to find two out of six more of these crates, which is going to be a lot of fun. 
I really just want to show you a little bit more of the uh, the UI and stuff, particularly the strategic elements, but to be able to actually get into the strategy, view, uh, the strategy view, the strategy, yeah, definitely needs full stops in between there, sorry. My brain is all over the place with this game, I just, ugh, right. Headed yeah, to show you more of the strategy view, we'll need to actually finish this, so we'll need to find the rest of these very annoying pieces of, uh... Okay. Right, can you pick that? No, wait. you just moved that, ready. okay. Yeah, so we need to find the rest of our supplies. Um, just defend. Uh, pay attention. Time to move. No one. Okay. Good job. On to the Pick next that up one. and Thank move you. to here. Now, why they've got an entirely separate button for pick up the item you're next to? Um, it's kind Let's of interesting. I, I think it's because they're very much focusing on that as the objective for missions is go here, pick up this, and then come back. So far, all my missions have been variants of that. Just there's been a convoy, go here, pick up the stuff at the convoy, or you know, there's a, a freighter ship, go to the freighter ship, pick up the stuff. Um, one thing I would like to have done if I'd looked at more time in this game is looked at there is more variety in missions. So far, all the missions do seem to be pretty much exactly the same in go here, pick up this. Um, unfortunately I can't actually tell you because I, I can't continue with this game. It is just so deathly boring. As you can see, this is incredibly deathly boring. Moving up, absolutely no one around. The AI is non-existent challenge. And if there is challenge, it's because you end up, like, popping Fog of War next to you and the chrysalidy type things run at you and attack you straight away and you start bleeding. Because that's a lovely effect, that you can bleed health. I just love that, that ability. Just tell me where you All right, now let's move up further. That's our extraction zone over there. And, okay, we've managed to find someone. It's a harnessy person, but we finished our turn. No, we haven't. Okay, so we can actually throw a grenade. We'll do that. And for some reason, it's orientating about a point outside of the grenade. Really interesting. Again, the explosions in this really do leave a lot to be desired. I'm hit. And another thing, which might sound a bit silly, it's the visual aesthetic of the game. I mean, yes, everything looks a bit horrible, but very flat textures. I mean, for a start, you look at this shipping container. You can see that these rungs down here have been individually modelled, it looks like. But the actual flat bit of the, uh, the container is literally a flat texture with no normal mapping at all, it seems. Uh, but yet they've decided to model these individual rungs. It just... And the texture quality is completely off. Like, here we've got higher res textures. They're still not great, but they look higher res than this. And this is awful quality textures. And then you look over at these barrels, and they're slightly different again. So these are more photorealistic-ish going for, whereas these seem to be a bit more glossy. It just... I have no idea where they're coming from on all of this. Oh god, I'm rotating the wrong way around again. Just tell me where to go. And Chris Lady type thing. Which is running away from me because it's scared. Okay. We're making it happen. Very slowly. We are making it happen, guys. True story. Um, what's our chance to hit from here? Daddy. And the way they fall over backwards, like they're, they're, like literally, the way she fell over backwards, like her feet were pinned to the ground, and she doesn't fall away from the bullet or anything, she just falls backwards, no matter whatever angle you shoot her from. Now, admittedly, with guns, there isn't actually much of a knockback, uh, Done. but it still looks really, really weird. And I'm hardly thinking that realism IRL is what they were going for with this game. Yeah, let's move up the last person. Um, just move to there. And we'll just defend. And that was one move. There we go. Something hurts. And of course, we can't Overwatch to do anything about that. Now he's bleeding, which is going to be a lot of fun. Ah, uh, this game, man. This game. Yeah, we'll shoot the chrysalid like thing, critter in the head. And we'll do the same again. We're making it happen. And we shoot off to the side. That, of course, does happen in XCOM. So, you know, it's not particularly saying that XCOM does better. But it's this game doesn't do anything better than XCOM. Right. Like, all the bugs that are in XCOM, apart from a couple of mapping bugs, 
are here. And that's probably because the maps in XCOM tend to be a little bit more complicated. Oh god, now we've got this again. Uh, switch. Uh, and who's got a med kit? Time to move. Med kit him. 30 health. He's bleeding. I don't know what we need to do that. Do we need to have like a separate thing, like bandages or something, I think, maybe? I don't think med kits do it. Back which is going to be frustrating. Anyway, talking about user reviews for this game, there's an odd distribution of user reviews. You look at, say, Steam, and it's one of the very few games on Steam that actually gets a mostly negative score. That's actually really, really rare on Steam, because of the way Steam, you know, sources it. People are only going to write reviews about games they really like. And if they're going to write a review about a bad game, the game has to be particularly bad to get them to do that. Let's switch weapons. So we look on Steam, and you've got the vast majority of reviews are, this game is awful, do not play. But there are a couple of reviews of people saying that this, you know, is brilliant, it does so many good things. I'm just very... Will do. ...curious as to where these people are sourcing their information. Uh, some of these people have played quite a lot of this game, and I'm honestly... I don't see how anyone could like playing this game. Um, I mean, you know, I know I'm meant to kind of keep you in suspense for my score of this game, or whatever I'm meant to be determining uh, it on, but... Here I go. How could anyone like this game? I like legit. I'm not saying that as in, you know, I hate the game. I'm trying to rag on it. I, I do hate the game. But ha there we go. The background's blinking in and out, as you can see. The lovely high definition background of. Well, all it is is a skyline. Um, how could anyone actually like this game? And there we go. You see her running up and getting herself flanked so she's not in cover anymore. At least she's less easy to hit because she's closer to my sniper. Oh. Not good enough. Okay. Now, I'm probably going to get people bleeding out, but I honestly couldn't care less anymore. Well, I couldn't care less to begin with, I'll be completely Just honest. Tell me where um, to go. Right, can you shoot that person, please, killer? But yeah, so there are some ah. user reviews, and they're very much a minority, with really kind of highish praise or scores if they're using a score system. So I looked over it. There we go. The camera can clip a lot of things. Um, that's that's lovely. That's just nice. Thank you. I've always wanted to look inside the piece of terrain that you so carefully modelled. Um, there seems to be a very odd distribution, like I said. Now, the distribution does seem to be... Uh, ooh, one left. Okay. That there seems to be maybe a very small minority where people are praising it and giving it High amounts of views or praise or score or whatever it is. There we go. Mission complete. We finally got out of here. Very high resolution loading screen there. It doesn't look at all photoshopped. We've got 250 metal and 500 food. It's very lovely images there. They look maybe akin to something you find in Age of Empires 2. Slightly higher res. And I'm very, very curious... Now, I looked on, say, IGN or whatever, who have the game listed, but haven't given it a score themselves, and there is one review on there giving it an 8.5, and a couple of other places, and this, that, and the other, and Metacritic, I think, has got one positive user review. It seems very odd that a very small minority of people are giving it very high scores. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to say it's astroturfed, but... So we've got a fighter... Our spiked kid, a berserker, and a scout. These are basically names for assault, infantry, heavy, and sniper. So our scout is a sniper. If you click that, you get to uh, skill them up. And then you can see that if we have customized currently selected by the default, like we don't have to be mousing over it, that is the highlighted one. Yet skills actually have something to do. And the thing that tells you about skills is this tiny flashing icon in the corner. Now this is bad UI, right? If I highlight a button, it should glow. If I don't highlight a button, it shouldn't glow. This is bad UI. Because this makes it look like customize is more important than skills. And customize is nothing new. So if we go skills, let's look at what we can get. So the first one is, take careful aim, increase the accuracy of shots by 10%. Very much precision shot from XCOM. If we have a look again, it allows the scout to move an additional grid square per AP, so that's basically getting more move. Pistol and accuracy is increased by 30%. Again, that's very similar to Gunslinger, except Gunslinger does damage in XCOM. Flare, light up target area. Enemies in the area have a 10% extra chance to be hit for one turn. That's somewhat 
understandable, like, yeah, okay, I could, and that's, that's not an XCOM clone. However, it's completely useless as a skill because you could just take shots. Um, it's a bit like hollow targeting, but an area effect. Improves accuracy while attacking from an elevated position. Again, that is uh, XCOM, and uh, seems damn good ground it's copied from. And then you've got crippling shot. I just, they're all very similar. Uh, I guess we'll take vantage point. All right, if we go back, escape. As you can see, there are no on-screen mouse control for back, which is just lovely, and we can't go previous and next unit using our mouse either. It's all keyboard driven there. So let's go customize. And you can, you know, you can change the names and so on. You can then have a look at their hair color, their skin color, their top and their pants. So let's look at the different skin colors. Now, does anyone think that these look like actual skin tones for actual minorities or even ethnic majorities uh, that you've ever seen in your... When was the last time you saw a white person with skin that was vaguely lilac? Or someone, I guess that's meant to be Asian, but it looks more like some sort of off cheese, that color. That's slightly closer to white, but it still looks like a deathly grey corpse to me. That's better, but too pink. That really is dead. That's not black people. I'm sorry, you're trying for that, but no. And we're back to crazy lilac. Um, the tops have a nice variety of colours. I will say that, you know, at least that is okay. That's not bad, right? That's not bad. Pants, not bad again. Hair color, yeah. Now, now we have to get onto the issue of hair texture color. The hair texture is awful. I can't rotate to show you, but when you get to the cutscenes, you will just see how just how bad it is. I don't know if we'll get actually a cutscene to have a look at. So let's just go back and if we look at equipment, actually, very briefly, you can see that we have, you know, a bolt action rifle, pistol, tattered vest, and here we go, basic first aid kit, and you can change this around. So field dressing, which stops bleeding effects. I didn't take any of those because A, I'm a numpty, and B, having to take both a field dressing and a med kit is a little bit ridiculous since you only got one item slot. You know, you don't have two item slots, so you're not XCOM, you only have one item slot. <sighs> I can't even go escape to go back. I have to I have to accept and then go back. And the way that it tells you that people have got stuff to level up, it doesn't, you know, glow them, it doesn't make anything really visually there's no visual dynamic -y feedback. It's this icon appears, right? And this icon does not look particularly encouraging. It's not like there's something desperately you need to do. This is the icon that's just like, oh, by the way. It's the same as their class, something that's unchanging you don't need to fiddle with. That It's bad UI. That's bad UI, right? I'm not even a bother, really, doing much with these. Like, if you just look at the skills, they are pretty much clones from XCOM. Here we can see that we've got cover area, automatically attack the first enemy that steps inside the area. That's Overwatch, but limited to an area. As I said, let's uh, grab that. And ooh, we can grab a second one as well. Allows the uh, fighter to attack or defend after sprinting. Okay, so basically that's run and gun for assaults in XCOM, but it's on a different class. Reduces the fighter's chance to be hit by 40%, uh, so it makes his defense slightly higher when he uses uh, what I call hunker down. Yeah, that's not a clone, I guess, but again, we'll, I guess we'll take that. Go back again, and back again, and we'll have a look at this, I guess. Yeah, let's go for it. I oh, know he was he was the Was he? He looked like an M16 to me. I don't even know anymore. Wow. They all merge into one. Right, uh let's get skills. And there we go, yeah, combat knife, and then with the second one we can get an extra utility item alone, the spike kid to carry more utility items. So that's that's a perk. They've they've got the second item slot being a perk. Three of the same utility item into one item slot. So basically, you can get variety or you can have three. I'm gonna go for three. You have variety between your uh, triplicity. Wow, that's some great naming you've got there. And again, you can oh you can right click to go back. Well, that's very obvious. Uh, rabbit. Custom? No, not customize. God no. Don't want any more mauve people. And suppression. 
Again, that was from XCOM. Uh, Rage up. Automatically attack any enemy that scores a critical hit on the Berserker. Or improves defense while suppression is active. Um, I guess I don't even really care. Let's go back. Back. And we will go back again. Now, unfortunately, you didn't get to see any of the amazing cutscenes. The cutscene quality in this game is... Certainly something. Now, it's a, it's a shame I haven't managed to show you that. But let's uh, go to the workshop. And there we go. We have completed the upgrade. Light vest. A light armor. Basic but effective armor. Basically, I have unlocked a new armor. This is, of course, one of the very early things you do. Uh, as you, you unlock that. Don't worry, I'm not that far in the game. But here we go. You've got things like, oh, we can unlock a flashbang. We can unlock a surefire pistol. A 9mm pistol, but we don't have the resources for that. Now, one thing I will say again is putting a tick mark here makes me think I've already got it. I was very confused when I first got into this game in the workshop. I was like, but I've already got these. Where are my new projects? Nope, these just mean you can do them. And this means you don't have the stuff to do it. This is, again, bad UI. This should be, you know, say flashbang. This should say 9mm pistol and be greyed out. It is greyed out. But you don't need to put a tick mark next to it because that means fulfilled, being done to me. That probably means the same for you guys at home. So we can unlock flashbangs or we can unlock sure fly fire slugs, which, um... Pistol slugs. I haven't used my pistol. I don't think I will. Flashbang. I don't know if I really want a flashbang because, again, we've got very limited item slots and apparently I need to take medkits and bandages. So those seem completely pointless to me. And again, you can see this is a complete rip of XCOM in that you have a workshop where you can do those. That's foundry. Infirmary. There we go. You can see your units. This is basically the barracks. Memorial. Such a high quality memorial here. And Armory. There we go. We can actually this is the other part of the barracks where you can look at your unit roster, you can recruit units. And you can see upgrades. And there we go. Another XCOM 1 squad slot 5, where you can get a fifth person, or you can have fresh meat where it increases the roster size, allowing you to have more people in your roster to pick from. Again, very much an XCOM thing. It does exactly what XCOM does, actually, as far as I'm aware. It, it goes up to six people in your squad. Um, what? <laughs> oh, and it... There is no base building mechanic, right? There's no base building mechanic. You have these three resources. Um, there is no research. It is just all done via sort of the, uh, the workshop, the sort of the foundry projects, as you will, from XCOM. And it lacks... The base building, it lacks the research, and everything else it does, it does badly. And it split up the barracks from XCOM into both infirmary and armory to make you feel like you've got more stuff going on. If you go to the war room, you can see what sort of missions we can get. And yeah, this is the sort of quality you can expect from our cutscenes. They are not higher res, they are not pre-recorded. In fact, I'd say they look worse than this, actually, generally. They actually look worse. Because the main actor, I can't remember his name, the main character... Uh, the, the badass dude with the long hair. Not, is he the main character? I can't remember. No, he's like the side character or something. Anyway, the guy with the long hair who's like meant to be a badass. His hair is like this, but longer. And it's a very flat brown texture. And it looks horrible. Ugh. Uh, now we can have squad missions. So you can have a dispatch mission. Send an individual on a dispatch mission to collect the individual resources. If you look at the squad missions, you see we've got you know a few points on a map. Alien technology. Unhappy campers. Strategic mission. Assault and battery. If you look, there we go, it'll say, you know, this is what you'll get, this is what you'll get. Check out a warehouse, blah, blah, blah. Basically, you have to go and pick up more stuff. Surplus equipment. Again, it's a very much another go here, pick up the resources mission. And you can see we've got harnesses, and we've got critters, and I can't remember what these dudes are. I think they're the bug dudes. But there is no dynamic feedback again. If I mouse over these, I want the names to pop up, etc. I want, you know, details to pop up. Again, it doesn't. I'd honestly say that this UI with the very rounded corners and the very grey and the very drab base sort of slightly, you know, greenish kind of khaki colour, it feels a lot like a slightly more high-res version of Fallout Tactics in the UI. And that's not a good thing. Fallout Tactics, yes, it was a good game in its time. But its UI is old, and nowadays, if you're going to make that game again, you wouldn't make that game with the same UI. There is a reason that we drop dead UIs by the wayside and don't bring them back. Admittedly, that's something that, you know, things like Wasteland 2 get wrong. They bring back a good game, but they bring back a bad UI with a good game. This UI is awful. Again, we've got buttons you can't click. 
I can use my right click to get back, but nowhere does it actually tell me that. We've got unrebindable keys. We have got incredibly poor graphics for cutscenes and poor graphics everywhere else. I would say it goes so bad as saying actually pretty dreadful graphics. Texture quality is bad to horrendous. It's inconsistent in how bad it is. Gameplay is just a copy of XCOM. A bad copy at that. If you're going to copy XCOM, at least you could copy it, right? But no, apparently you can actually copy something and get it wrong. I have no idea how you can copy something like XCOM and get it wrong. There are actually things you could definitely improve upon XCOM and has been known to be things that people generally want improved. It's why the Long War mod for XCOM is doing so well, because it makes a lot of improvements. People, Things people want to change, things to be more like the original XCOM. But what they've done is they've copied XCOM and done it poorly. They haven't even taken on board the things that people want changed. They haven't done any sort of research. They've literally copied XCOM and done it poorly. They've got rid of the base building, which in terms of, you know, a... Uh, a survival game where you're trying to build back sort of a humanity sort of stronghold and humanity's got to hold out. You think base building would be an important part, but no, they've got rid of that. Um, they've got rid of research. They've only literally got the foundry projects from the workshop. And they've got these these three resources up here, which aren't terrible. And XCOM does have more than just the money. It's got, of course, Illyrium, Alloy, and now uh, anyway, then it's got Meld. So having three resources isn't like, oh, they're doing more than XCOM. They're very doing a very similar thing to XCOM. But it's not like you need food to keep people like alive that you're looking after. People you're looking after don't have an impact on you. You are literally a military organization without the civilians that you're looking after. And in, in Fallen Skies, the TV show, a very important part of what they were was they were like a group of civilians with this sort of militaristic like defense sort of system that they had. You know, people would join to defend the group and occasionally they'd go on, you know, runs or whatever and do things. But they're not they've completely forgotten about the civilian part of it. So not only have they got rid of the core of the TV show, which is, you know, defending a civilian way of life while trying to, you know, attack back against the aliens, they've completely got rid of that civilian side. You are literally the military, in which case they're just copying XCOM. They've got rid of the TV show aspect, but they've tried to do XCOM and they've done it badly by just missing out entire sections of gameplay, such as the strategy view. There isn't any strategy. It's literally pick another mission to go on. It might as well be a level select screen. And the resources you buy here are literally upgrade your stuff at the workshop. There isn't a vast variety of choice. Um, and it seems completely pointless to me. I mean, if you look at the armory, when you look at upgrades, they're just these. If we look at workshop, we look at the upgrades here. Again, they're just these. There's not a lot of choices. Once we get something, we have an infinite amount of it. It seems you don't have to actually pay to build it. And in XCOM, that would be something that I'd actually complain about. In XCOM, you'd think that once you've researched something, you've researched a laser rifle, you'd think that the whole of humanity would be suddenly building laser rifles. But in this, where you've actually got limited resources, it makes no sense that you could suddenly go, okay, we've we've invented a better quality of flak vest. Everyone gets a flak vest. No, no, you'd think you'd have to, with your very limited resources, slowly build up your, your inventory. But no, there, there isn't such a thing. Uh, in fact, this game seems to completely miss several things that would have been thematic. Uh, in favor of just dumbing everything from XCOM down, not dumbing it down to make it a, a beginner's intro type thing, um, something that I think you know XCOM actually did fairly well. It dumbs it down because it cannot do it, or because it just doesn't have the balls to actually implement the systems. I don't know why. It skipped several things that would be thematic. It's missed out on core gameplay elements. The gameplay elements it has are wrong, bad, or broken. <sighs> Broken isn't so much an issue of this game. There are a few bugs, but the bugs haven't crippled gameplay. I haven't at least encountered any of them. There are bugs too of cameras going through walls, people's animations going through things, etc. Nothing terrible. In fact, I would probably go so far as to say that XCOM had more game-breaking bugs when it came out than this game has, which is more to do with condemning Firaxis than actually condemning Taurus games. But this is just awful. The game design is awful. The UI is awful. The options are awful. Again, this is just a horrendous game. And to cap it off, it's a full price title. This game has come out on Steam and it is a full price title. That is to say it is 30 quid in the UK and probably going to be, you know, 40, 45 dollars or whatever it is for you in America. And you can probably expect it to be your full price AAA game wherever else you are, which for Australians probably means like $200 or whatever it is you're getting charged now, guys. It's, it is ridiculous. Um, I can't believe someone could actually copy a game and get it this badly wrong. I mean, seriously, if your design document is XCOM, how can you screw that up? I... It boggles my mind. This game is an affront to XCOM. It's an affront to actually charging this amount of money. 
and it is something that I wouldn't even buy for a dollar. I I wouldn't I wouldn't want it for free actually because it would merely be a waste of space. I have had to play now two and a half hours of this game, and every one of them I wish I could have got my life back. In fact, I think watching paint dry would have been preferable. This game is nails on the chalkboard to me as someone who's played a lot of XCOM, and I think honestly, if you're even remotely tempted by this, go hit your head against a wall a few times and go buy XCOM. I've been Entralysium. If you've liked this video, please like. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. As per usual, stay shiny.